Well, hello, darlings. Welcome back to another episode of The Way of the High Priestess. This one is going to be a bite-sized episode where I'm going to be talking specifically about how to transform through triggers. I was recently on a podcast with a dear connection of mine, and one of the questions that she asked was, how did I transform through my triggers, and how do I work with clients to transform through theirs? Now, there are many directions we can go when it comes to feeling triggered, especially in romantic partnership. And I swear it is one of the most fertile grounds for minds, just like the parent-child relationship can be. Now, there are a number of different approaches to working with triggers. Some of them are psychological and cognitive in nature. But the one approach I wanna talk about today is one of my areas of specialty and one of the things that I have used most often in my life to transform through triggers and one of the, the practices and ways of being that I teach many of my clients. And that is transforming through physical touch. So one of the ways to think about this is when the initial wound occurred, that creates the trigger that we're seeing in our present day. So I'll give an example from my relationship. It might be Ani giving me some very direct penetrating feedback on something. And then all of a sudden I feel triggered and the wound of not being enough comes up. Now, if I go back to the origin point of that wound, it is not there in my relationship with Ani. The origin of that wound is far earlier. And that typically happened in relationship with my mom. When as a child, I internalized the narrative that I wasn't good enough because of X, Y, and Z thing. So when I understand that the origin of that wound that is now arising as a trigger in my present day conversation, I can also ask the question, what would the version of me then need in order to feel nurtured and safe and calm so that I didn't have to feel or relate to myself as not enough, as being punished, as being a bad girl, et cetera. So supplementarily speaking, and I don't even know if supplementarily is a word, but from a supplemental perspective, I can start to understand that there are psychological narratives at play when these triggers come up. And we'll, we'll keep that sort of as a sidebar for a moment. I want to focus on the embodied experience of what a trigger feels like when it arises for us. So going back to what I would have needed in that moment when I was three or four or five, when these initial wounds were getting created, where I formed the idea that I wasn't enough or I was a bad girl that needed to be punished, what I would have needed at the time was physical touch. I would have really wanted for mom to scoop me up in her arms and to rock me to wrap her arms around me and to say, it's okay, I've got you, you're a good girl, I love you, you're safe, you're okay. And so if you're watching me on video, you can see that I'm wrapping my arms around myself and I'm grabbing my left arm with my right hand and my right arm with my left hand and just slowly stroking my shoulders and my upper arms. And that creates a sense of grounding for me. But also when we cross our arms across our body and left goes to right and right goes to left, we're allowing the two opposite hemispheres of our brain to communicate in a way that they might not have before. So there is a neurological purpose to this. There is a somatic purpose to this. There is a deeply embodied and nurturing purpose to this. Now that's the kind of touch that feels good for me. I often also like receiving a pressure or a firm touch on my chest or feeling hugged around my waist. Sometimes I really enjoy putting my hands on my face and just grabbing my face and letting myself know it's okay. And so when I combine touch with a simple phrase that my four-year-old self could understand, like, it's okay, you're safe. I love you, I've got you then I immediately inspire a response of safety, a deep knowing, a deep feeling of safety that allays and starts to really iron out the prickly edges of the trigger. And so 
coming back to my present day self when I'm in these sorts of scenarios with Ani and something feels triggering for me, I will often immediately go to touch because I know that the origin of that trigger is not here and now as my 31 year old self. So I can't cognitive my way out of it. I can't logic my way out of it by saying, okay, I see that I'm triggered. I need to use nonviolent communication. I need to do X, Y, and Z, right? Those things are great. And I utilize those tools, but what really supports me the most and what I find support a lot of my clients the most, especially those who identify as women is first touch, simple words of affirmation. It's okay. I've got you. I love you. You're safe. Taking a deep breath, letting myself know I'm here, looking around the room, seeing that I am physically safe. I'm okay. And then I continue on as my adult self here and now. Or I say something like, hey, I'm feeling really tender right now. That was really hard for me to hear. Um, I'm finding that it's bringing up feelings of not being enough. And it allows me to communicate from a, from a vulnerable, open-hearted place that is different than the place I would communicate from if I were in my defense mechanisms, my protective mechanisms, my needing to put a wall up and let him know that he can't do this because it crossed my boundary. And listen, there's a time and place for firm communication. But often when we can really allow ourselves to surrender into our open heartedness and our tenderness, because we can give ourselves what we need, like physical touch, the thing we would have needed when we were back there at three years old or four years old, maybe it's words of affirmation. Then we can start to open a space to transform through a trigger. And we get to see all of the nuances and subtleties of the things that are within that trigger. It's not just that I can't handle feedback. It's that, oh my gosh, when I received feedback in that way, it brought me back to this time when I was very young and I formed the idea that I wasn't enough. There's so much more richness and complexity in being able to create a transformation like that and presence like that with ourselves than just saying, oh, I should be able to toughen my skin to receive feedback or I should be able to communicate conscientiously or whatever else we think we need to be doing. So using embodiment, deep embodiment and, and more physical touch to transform through triggers can be one approach that really serves us in a deeply nurturing way that is nurturing in the sense that it brings us all the way back to what we would have needed as children, what we would have wanted in our primary relationships with those caregivers and what allows us to still feel nurtured today. Ah. <sighs> I wish you well in your journey to transforming through your triggers. Uh, I wish you a lot of ease and joy and introspection as you go on this journey, especially in your relationships. And I would love to hear from you. If something from this episode really resonated, please feel free to reach out to me on Instagram at linoto underscore. And if something from this episode resonated for you, I invite you and I would so appreciate if you posted a sound clip of this on social media and you tagged me, or if you sent this to someone who you know needs to hear it, because we are all humans walking this earth together with our emotions and our triggers and our desires and hopes and dreams. So if we could help each other out by walking each other home and sharing this with people in our lives for whom this would be useful, then I know that we can pay it forward. Sending you all so much love and good vibes. Peace.